T T B Music Podcast. wants to know what can help me with. What am I doing? I'm talking with you. Help me record a podcast. Help me record a podcast? This is comedy gold. There's nothing in your music library. Just silence. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's possibly the best review I've ever had. Uh, right, so, come <coughs> <in>. <laughs> <Where> <laughs> <were> we? Yeah. <laughs> After a, a uh, long summer hiatus. Do you remember when we used to sort of do like, 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 we'd go like have a summer drinks and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I've not seen you for like eight weeks. Yeah. Yes, like music, musical differences. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens. This is podcast on, seven. On, on the, the road too long. Podcast eight, really, by now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Exciting things ahead. Uh, including Arcade Fire Everything Now. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I'm something to tell you. Justin Curry, this is my kingdom now. Waxahachie out of the storm, out in the storm, sorry. Tyler the Creator, Flower Boy, and Lana Del Rey, Lust for Life. Mm. So we start with the fifth studio album from Arcade Fire Everything Now and a slight change in direction from the arcades yes um this was arcade fire um this was the ab album (laughs) (laughs) yeah 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 Yeah, i definitely i was definitely getting an abra-esque vibe throughout this record um it's a interesting one this one i think i didn't respond that well to the last record uh is that reflector reflector yeah just a reflector just a, see that's the only yeah. song i can remember off it um i so i can't tell you anything else about that album i, I didn't have much of an impact on me i have to say though um after some initial concerns about this change of direction um uh, this was okay this 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 grew on me yeah. And 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 I think maybe again because I felt there was like a pop album trying to get out of an Arcade Fire album at times. Um, and I, yes. I, I, I now and you probably have a different view. I don't know, but but I actually quite quite liked some of that. And um, whilst it has the irritating intellectual, uh, aren't we so clever um, angle to their work, which sometimes comes through. Yeah. Um, and you have the continuous loop of everything now. Uh, book ending either of the the album in yes. a, in continued a, in, in an ever so, oh so continued way. Um, but everything they continued. I like, like the fact that the opening track is. It's called, called, called every. Then it goes into everything, everything now. Um, I, 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 and somewhere in the middle of the album, my attention did did wander even on repeated listenings. But actually, I, I found the final sort of third or so, um, certainly side two, more enjoyable than side one. Um, and actually, a testament perhaps to the pop sensibility of it, I've been singing the backing track to Put Your Money On Me. Put your money on, on your money... I can't stop singing that. Yeah, it's become I'll, a real earworm for me. Oh, give me the best track on the album. Yeah, all weekend I've just been humming away. You know, put your money on... So, so um, of course, it reminds me of Abba's Lay All Your Love On Me. <laughs> yeah, see? Yeah. Um, so... I mean, all in all, if you liked their earlier work and you don't mind <laughs> a more a pop sensibility, then you'd probably you'd be all right with this album. Yeah, it's a, <clears throat> it is and certainly an interesting record. I mean, we we've quite often made a point on the podcast of talking about how we'd like to see people kind of change. Stretch mm. themselves, yeah. you know, and not just churn out the same thing mm. time and time again. Um, so, in that sense, it'd be quite churlish of me just just to criticise the album for on that level. Um, I agree with you in this definitely that I think the second half of the album is the part of the album that interests me more from um, the two versions of Infinite Content, the po- the punky version, and then the yeah. acoustic yeah. version. 
uh, right. on, onwards. I think the album definitely has more to offer for me as a as, as listener. First half of the album, whilst very poppy, everything now has been played to death on Radio 2, so I'm, I'm right. can hum bits of that quite, ha- quite happily. Although it's still fairly take it or leave it as musically as far as I'm concerned. And most of the first half of the album has that kind of just leaves me quite cold. It's all fine. In fact, everything there reminded me a lot of um, Simple Minds. Actually, oh, yes, alive and kicking, yeah, that period. Yeah. Minds. <laughs> um, it's not so really about that, I think some of the live kicking stuff was good, mm. but that's the kind of sound that yes. it, it evoked for me, yes. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I, I just kind of thought it just over, overall there wasn't enough on this album to maybe kind of go, yes, I'm definitely going to be playing this for the rest of the year, yeah. Because I'm not. <laughs> no, that's that's fair. That's fair. I think, um, and I think you, you touched you touched on it there. I feel that maybe with um, was it the the suburbs, the burbs, yeah, whatever, yeah, that one. Um, I thought that, which I thought was all right, and then then the last album, Reflector. I think maybe they had got themselves into a bit of an arcade fire by numbers rut. Um, Possibly, yeah. Because their first couple of albums are, are brilliant, absolutely brilliant. No. Yeah. Anyway, moving on <laughs> to Heim that rhymes with time. Heim rhymes with time. With something to tell you. Uh, mm-hmm. Second album from uh, the trio. Mm-hmm. Uh, the debut album we both liked a lot. Yes. It's, uh, one of our surprises of a, a few years ago. Yes. Uh, so second second time around. Again, trying to change the sound slightly, but not. Hugely, it's still very much based around that kind of uh, Fleetwood Mackey type bass mm. note, if you like. Um, this is this is this album has grown on me. Although, like unlike the first uh, first um, record, I mean by Arcade Fire, here, I, the, I prefer the first half of this album to the second second half of the album very much. I think I think it starts really strongly with "Want You Back." Mm. And nothing's wrong in Little of Your Love, which have that immediacy and the kind of vibrancy that the songs on the debut album definitely had. Um, I think as the album goes on, it's less so- less strong, less killer, and more, not quite filler, but just <laughs> lacking something. I mean, I, whilst I'm saying, saying that, on some levels I think this is a more adventurous record I think certainly uh, the arrangements uh, the production and some of the other things going on and the playing in fact I think are far more adventurous than on the, the first album and I think a lot of that does come through on repeated listenings mm. and of course you've got those crisp harmonies um, particularly I think a real great example of that is on um, Kept Me Crying when there's a kind of nice isolated vocal harmony bit you know, the, the yes, style, which is yes. really really good yes. um, also one of the best tracks on the album as well. Yeah. Um, towards the end of the album, the only real standout track is Right Now, which was a single as well. Um, and it's 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 a, it's a solid second album. You know, cl- classic solid second album. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I, I, I wonder what Michael Jackson was up to these days, and uh, <laughs> I now I have my answer. Um, it, it, yeah, it, it, for me, this, this hit... Um, very much solid territory uh, it, I agree with everything you say around the first the opening of the album first few tracks I found that after a while um, again with the exception of that track at the end where towards the end where you do have the isolated harmonies I found it I found it quite repetitive to be honest did yeah um, I didn't feel com- it comment broke. I'm going to make like, later on the yeah podcast I, think well. I think I'm going to be saying this a lot but um, no, d- no compared to, to other albums of the podcast this is this yeah this was a good album um, but but I found that, that, yeah, that sort of major step forward, obviously the debut was fantastic. This one felt a bit more settled, but not necessarily in a great way. Yeah, I think High Hopes for the third album. Oh, yeah, classic third album, yeah. major musical style change, my prediction. You heard it here first. Thank you very much. OK. Uh, move on to album three, uh, Justin Curry, This Is My Kingdom Now. This is actually a request, a listener request, this one. So, Spence, we are doing it. 
You may regret that very shortly, or you may not, which we'll find out in a moment. <laughs> um, for those who don't know who Justin Curry is, or don't remember who Justin Curry is, he was a lead singer with Delamitri, who obviously had lots of hits back in the early 80s. This um, is how it's only, only, surprisingly, only his fourth solo album. So, is Pete going to, hey, Pete, is Spence going to regret us reviewing this or not? No, it's all right. Um... I temper my comments now. <laughs> I don't know who Spencer is. No, I know who Spencer is. Um, I, I it's, 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 it's a grower. I tell you what, it's a grower. Yes. Um, a third, third or fourth listen. Um, I've, I've found that I was perhaps enjoying it uh, more than initially. Um, again, perhaps feel it goes on a little too long. If I have a criticism, yes. um, uh, you know, I sort it's of have sameness thing again. Yeah, it does. It does. To, particularly towards the end, all the tracks seem to merge into one. But, but actually, the opening of the album crosses across, crosses across. Geez, um, yeah, it cuts across a number of um, different <laughs> variants on his style. <laughs> put it that way. That's a, that is quite a fair <laughs> summation of actually what it is. Yeah, I think it opens well with "My Name Is God" and and uh, the first three tracks in particular are good. I found "Sydney Harbour Bridge" a bit of a dirge, if I'm honest. Yeah. Uh, but, the, but weirdly, that grew on me eventually because oh, I ask, it's not, it's not it's harmless, really, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> um, and then around the middle of the al- album, I, I, yeah, attention starts to wander. It's a solid album. I'm quite surprised it's only his fourth. Yeah, I'm quite surprised it's fourth album. You know, because Delamitri, they packed up a while ago, didn't they? They did. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's all right. What did you think? Uh, a bit the same, really. I mean, I, 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 again, I think. Definitely, the first half of the album is definitely the stronger, yeah. the stronger half. I think. For I say, my name is God. Um, title track: This is my kingdom now. And mm. Cry Baby yes. as well. I think. Yes. Pretty good. Um, there's a lot of sea mm. going on. There's a, there's a lot sea. of sea and water. Lots of seeing and sea and bridges crossing sea and. Yeah, and Hey yeah. Polly, which is kind of towards middleish towards end. Of the oh yeah. That's quite short. It's quite nice. That's right. Yeah. That song as well. Yeah. But yeah, I, mean, I agree. I think the album's the songs are pretty good, but it does have that problem that when listened to as a whole you get towards the latter part of the album and you are just thinking yeah th- th- it could be this you know a change of pace or something you just, just rock it, put just, throw, just, throw a rocker in there or yeah, something just would, would speed really out. kind of just yeah. brighten things up a bit yeah. it does start to kind a of bit more spit and sawdust that required yes that. yes so moving on to uh, fourth album from uh Waxer Hatchy. Um, and I can't remember if we've reviewed one of her albums before or not. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know we, certainly, yeah. we, we certainly considered reviewing one of her albums before, whether we actually did. did get around to it. Was it that podcast that we, that we didn't talk about? <laughs> one of the, many, the, lost, the lost one. One of the many, one of the many <laughs> lost podcasts, yeah. Um, so I can't remember if, if actually we uh, did or not. Um, anywho, um, this is her fourth album. Uh, um, I'm trying to remember what her name is suddenly. It's um, I think Kate. I think it's Katie Crutchfield because we reviewed her sister's mm, album yeah. Alison Crutchfield yes. earlier, earlier on in the year. We did, um, and she also appears on this album as well. Um, if, we, if we haven't review, reviewed one of her al- albums b- before, I think the, the easiest way to describe the sound is to say, think back to kind of belly um, breeders type sound of indie pop mm, mm. and you've pretty much got the kind of musical area that she operates in it's a lovely short album just 30, short. 30, 32 minutes long 10 tracks 32 minutes long uh, it has a theme of sorts about a uh, breakup we do like a breakup record on this podcast um, at times it's uh, I say it's quite uh, punchy at times as well I mean there's a uh, a track on it's called uh, Brass Beam in the middle of it, which uh, I think is really kind of, you know, it's like, I enjoyed your criticism, self-loathing, and all your doubt, I held you up above myself, tried to ride it out, but lost in your rendition of reality, all my offering rendered boring, hyperbole. No. Wonderfully uh, done. Uh, it is quite a uh, punch-in-the-face kind of song. Musically as well as lyrically is one of the uh, rockier tracks mm. on the, uh, the the al- the album, along with the uh, o- opening track "Never Been Wrong." Uh, and I think because I was a fan of Belly and the Breeders, this appeals to my kind of 
indie girl music stylings and the songs are pretty good yeah they're they're, they're they've got catchy choruses rattle along like i said 10 tracks half an hour i've listened to it several times in fact listened to it a couple of times a couple of times a day because it was so short it's like oh my god I, I can get another listen in mm. um and actually it was a pleasure to listen to again so also it wasn't me going oh i can listen to it again it was like, oh i can listen to it again and actually i quite enjoyed it so don't mind listening to it again possibly giving it away possibly might be my album of the podcast Ooh. not mine <laughs> <laughs> um which begs the question which one is uh <laughs> really it does um yeah it's short and it in, in that respect and um, i it's enjoyable it's put no that sounded terrible didn't it no that sounded terrible i mean yeah it's it, it's a pun it's a punch in the face it is a punchy vibrant uh rocky record um that yeah i i i i completely see why you like it i think i need some more listens i've listened to this about four times as well because mm. it's so short um the the sort of the the the, the terse uh, nature of some of the lyrics actually I, I, I haven't this passed me by a little bit if I'm honest um, so maybe I haven't quite properly been tuning into the lyrics because it's quite loud and punchy yeah. and you know musically quite enjoyable um, so I think I've missed missed something here um, uh, so so I'm going to give this one another go for, for me though uh, again I, I couldn't tell you much about this record after I'd listened to it four times yeah um, other than it was loud I mean, maybe that's what you want. I don't know. Well, compared to most of the other records, <laughs> exactly. Yes, yeah, it yeah. Was. maybe it woke me up. You know what? What? Oh. <laughs> um, so, so I think I think it deserves more listens. Um, but as you as you put it, if you like loud, punchy, uh, girl-driven rock, then yeah, yeah. Moving on to rap. Yes. And Tyler the Creator, Flower Boy, mm. uh, an artist that uh, I have to confess I was not um, uh, familiar with before we decided to review this record. This, again, no. this is his fourth album as well, so he's yeah. been around for a few years. Uh, is this an oversight from us or not? Um, it's tricky, uh, because a lot, of the, a lot of the rap that we've um, reviewed... We've got a lot of British stuff. We've done a lot of British stuff. So in, in some ways it was quite refreshing to catch up on what contemporary rap over Side of Pond is, is, yeah. is doing. Um so in in that respect yeah um it it was it was a change um but actually i've really got into our <laughs> our grime <laughs> of late um so to sort of take a step back and get something into a bit more traditional hip hop um took some adjustment for me just for me um that said there was a lot happening in the production of this album which i really enjoyed Mm. Um, a lot of the moods that were created, a lot of the, the, the production of the samples, um, uh, very one notable sample, I'm, I'm sure you, you'll mention. Um, and, and and I actually found I found I found I found that that, that June wise, yeah. uh, really enjoyed really enjoyed this. And actually, um, I'll come to that come to the rap in a moment. Actually, the the final track, enjoy right now today. Real, the album closes on a real ambient track, instrumental, which is just yes, re <laughs> really, really nice. But <laughs> it's it's really quite, good. I mean, there are it is quite funny because yeah. there are several kind of ambient type moments on the record. Yeah, which is quite odd because it is. Yeah, it is it's hard very to rest places. So, so it's bookended. I mean, I mean, um, where this flower blooms at the beginning with with Frank Ocean is yeah. beautiful, ambient track in there as well which I, I really like um, now a sample I was going to mention of course is uh, Groove is in the Heart yeah. which um, is features heavily on the track I Ain't Got Time um, and and I see that this is the uh, first album of the podcast featuring uh, ASAP Rocky yes <laughs> thankfully he's only on one track on this album yes he gets more later yeah. um, so again interesting collaborations I didn't think much of the collaborations if I'm honest there are a lot of people yeah. chucked on the record. I I said. Uh, yeah, I, I, I preferred, I preferred it when perhaps um, you know there wasn't so many. But but all, all in all, um, and I've only given this a couple of lessons, but I have I have actually enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I, don't, I didn't mind this record. It was quite, in, quite interesting. Um, 
and lyrically it's quite an interesting record again it's definitely has uh, a lot of relationship stuff going go, go, going going on um you know in dress dresses potential you know coming out admitting you're kind of gay issue gay issue who's god and shed which features the still mm. lyrics of that are very much along those lines or can certainly be interpreted along those lines um i think that and boredom which follows it and then i ain't got time for enough for our three other tracks that work best on the record yeah yeah agree and um, strongest in the middle yeah uh although the opening track i also like as well, well which actually uh forward it's called, which features a really nice uh, sampled by oh, the band yes. Can. Yes. Um, and actually, their bassist uh, Holger Chokai died uh, just a few oh, days ago. Right, a few right. days ago. So oh. nice tie-in for yeah. on the death front. <laughs> but uh, it was nice to hear a bit of a you know yeah German music. Um, but yeah, I, I, I was um, pleasantly surprised by this record. It's not mm. again. It's not one that's going to set the world alight uh, for me at least. But by, by any stretch of the means. Stretch of the means. Stretch of the means. Yeah. Yeah. I am talking gibberish. Stretch of the imagination. That's the one. Means yeah. to an end. Yeah. Those as well. <laughs> we need to go out and have a drink, frankly. What is this we've got yet? <laughs> uh, it's toucan. Yeah. Nice. Mm. Seem to be renamed to avoid, um, you know. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so, <laughs> I think we might just move on. Visual going. And, right. Uh, okay. Move on to a long. <laughs> Long <laughs> album uh-huh. from Lana Del Rey. How long is this album? Uh, too long. Is right. The answer is the short answer <laughs> to that. This is the fifth album from Lana, and uh, see, I never know how to count her albums as yeah. well because there's that whole. Yeah, I think it's the fifth. Is it as, fifth as, one? Fifth one as her, as Lana Del Rey. Oh right, right, okay. Counting the other ones. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Important. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is the happy album we were talking yes, about. Yes, it's the happy album. The, happy the album. big smiling Lana on the front cover. Yeah. That's what it's, 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 <laughs> if you if you if you like Lana Del Rey and you've and you've bought the previous previous out albums, I think most of what's on here is gonna tick your boxes. Uh, it starts off and again it's a really strong start actually, I think the first mm. four or five tracks particularly. Yep. Um until we get ASAP Rocky. ASAP Rocky. Um on tracks six and seven. Um and it's all those kind of things that we love about Lana Del Rey. It's kind of lush, atmospheric kind of production, mm. kind of dreamy kind of yeah. um, instrumentation, and her distinctive voice coming in. And it's all going great. It's going great, and then it just starts getting a bit dull, and then it starts getting a bit long, <laughs> and then it starts just going on and on and on <laughs> and despite the fact that there are some good songs towards the end yes. by, the time, by the time I got there on the three listens I did to that album I really didn't care <laughs> I just wanted the album to end <laughs> and the biggest disappointment actually is Beautiful People and Beautiful Problems which is uh, mm. Stevie Nicks yep. um, which I thought was you know not as good as I hoped it would be no. for, for a track it's absolutely not one of the stronger tracks on the album which is a shame I was, I was also the of voices is good. I was similarly disappointed with uh, a track entitled Tomorrow It Never Came featuring the son of John Lennon <laughs> indeed <laughs> yes um, so yeah um, it's I think there's a a decent 40 minute album here for this album's about an hour I think and that's yeah. I just yes it, it needs it needs uh, yeah it is lo- it's a long album but actually curiously um, I didn't really the length for me wasn't particularly an issue D- the issue comes yes towards the end you get to track 11 and 12 and you think and the, the, the collaborations don't quite hit the mark and I'll be honest with you after that I then sort of start to yeah the, the, the impact isn't as strong um, but actually I, f- I found that there's enough in here if you like Lana Del Rey and I suspect I like her more than, than you do I, I may be wrong um, it does enough to keep keep you going but it isn't that different perhaps to her previous albums except perhaps there's a little bit more of a I can't even say lighter tone but <laughs> do you know what I mean yeah <laughs> it's not really is it um no, not particularly. Not particularly, no. Uh, but 
you know, the, the, perhaps some of the um, perhaps some of the collaborations are a little bit more playful. Yeah, I suppose that's fair. Right? Yeah, there you go. Managed to get it in there. Um, so yeah. So I said for me, so a bit 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 of the flat flat experience. Yeah. So my my album podcast is probably works the hatch out at the stump, close, yeah. closely followed by um, time, I guess. So I have clearly missed the point with that one. Um, so I shall go back, slap myself on the wrist, and try again. Um, for me, in that case, uh, for me, I'm, I'm torn. I, I almost want to give it to Tyler the Creator, just because there was more in there that, that I found interesting. Um, but in terms of a complete album, um, I have to say, Arcade Fire starting to win through on repeated listens. Okay. So, so. Bit bit torn with this podcast. Bit torn with the list over ho- overall, really. Yes. Yes. Uh, that on that much, I think we're in agreement. <laughs> <laughs> Slow summer for music. What can we say? Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. Some killer albums next. Yeah. Podcast. Please, because um, that that end of the year show is looking a bit sparse. It is. Yeah. Yes. Top fives. Right top fives top this 20s. year. <laughs> I'm to struggle with that at the moment. <laughs> We've got a new Susan Sunfall album coming coming up next podcast. Excellent, so that's a shoo-in. Yeah, if that's <laughs> if that's disappointment, there's going to be two very sad middle-aged men here. <laughs> See you then.